Super excited this afternoon with our Leadership Unplugged series, continuing with my friend, Mike Brannigan, who's the president and chief executive officer of the Seteth Company. So, Mike, thank you so much for being here. You, Appreciate Peggy. it. Yeah, good my to see pleasure. you. Yeah. Same here. All right, so we're going to talk just a little bit about leadership, disruption, cultural shift. You came from outside the industry. Yes. So, what, you've been in the role a couple years now? Uh, three years as CEO and three years before that as COO. Okay, so six years. So, six this years. Is, you know what, you've seen tremendous disruption and change. But, you know, you're in an organization that's trying to move through a transformation, yes. which I think is very different from a company that gets to come in with a startup sort of mentality. So talk to me about that challenge that you have in sort of understanding what's happening in the macro world and then making and delivering that change internally. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. And uh, we're about to celebrate 100 years next year. Oh my gosh, Yeah, wonderful. so yeah, it'll be a great opportunity to talk about yeah. the past, the present, and the future. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Uh, as, as you're saying, you know, we grew up as an asset-based moving yeah. storage company and we're changing. Yeah. Uh, and this, the global mobility landscape is changing. So it's not that we're shying away from the assets, but you need to sort of transform the country company. You have to embrace digital. You have to embrace technology. You have to recognize that this global workforce is changing. Yes. Right? The workforce is changing. How we need to support global mobility is changing. So while assets are an important part of our business, being able to connect with clients yeah. through a, a broader global mobility function is really critical. Yeah. So it's been an interesting challenge getting us to think uh, from assets being men and trucks to assets being our employees, our service, our technology, our infrastructure in a very different way. So it's been, it's been quite, a, quite a journey we're on. Yeah. So, you know, when you talk about the journey that you're on and we were bantering a little bit earlier that it's not only sort of setting the tone with the internal employees. We just went through, I think, what you're getting ready to go through, which was we gutted our space. Yeah. And so talk to me about how you came to sort of think that you needed to bring it into the physical environment. Yeah. Yeah. That is, it's very interesting because I think for the as I've been in the role now the few years, the first few years were really on the strategy and what's the right portfolio of businesses. And now a lot of like our a lot of our clients, we're focusing more and more of my attention is on our own employee experience. Yeah, yeah. So I love the terminology here about employee experience because we're talking a lot about the customer experience and we view our employees as our customer. So with the millennials becoming more and more of a, a, a significant part, you know, they have this whole concept of resumercial, right? Oh, Which yeah, is they want to they yeah. want the you know, to, to attract them to be there, they want it to feel a little more homey. They yeah. want to have different amenities. So what we're having to do is really rethink the physical yeah. space because the physical space and the culture really do go hand in hand, yeah. right? So less dedicated space, but more collaborative space and so forth. So I think the theme that we have here around employee experience, a lot of it is about collaboration. Yeah. yeah. So creating a physical workforce that promotes collaboration internally to support your external clients that's become a, a more and more significant portion. So uh, we happen to be in the furniture space. Yeah, so it works out well. So it works out, but that's where, you know, when I went to visit some of these locations and our customers, I saw how their workforces yeah. were changing and how they needed to change the physical environment to support the strategic change. Yeah. It was really an epiphany for me that we need to do the same thing in our company. Similar thing. So, you know, you're a great prognosticator, <laughs> which is always good because it's safe because nobody holds you accountable when you get to do that. But you know what? I want to get your perspective on, you know, the landscape of mobility in a full employment model. Yeah. So what does this mean? Like, are you hearing this from your customers and their customers? And, you know, how do you think about that three and five years out? It's totally different when unemployment was eight or nine percent but I see nothing on the horizon suggesting the opposite. So how do you think about that? Yeah, well, I, in terms of uh, where we think it's going, uh, you, you know, this whole concept of disruption is interesting because we have different parts of our business. And I would argue that this industry has been disrupted for many years, right? And if you, in our van line side of our business, we see the amount of moves going down, right. but globally, the amount of moves are going up. Right. They're just changing They're the different. nature. It's shorter term assignments, yeah. it could be, integrating a virtual workforce. So from our standpoint, moving into some of these other services that support a very different mobility experience where I think you'll see more and more mobility, it's just changing. How it's gonna look. It's, right, so, so 
Go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, things like that. the visa and immigration and tax and cross-border issues, which in a, a complex geopolitical environment, oh. which we don't see changing. Yeah, yeah. Right, in what should be a, a few, at least a few more years of, of good solid growth, right? Yeah. Nothing on the horizon would suggest otherwise. So we see that the, the trends are, are very favorable uh, for continued growth and mobility. It's just going to be a little bit different than it has been historically. So we need to be preparing for that continued evolution. Yeah. So uh, on out the pike. So you got three young kids. Yes. Right. Halloween. Halloween. All right. So what do we got? What's going on? Are you are you you, you go out with the kids, or do you stay home and give away the candy? Uh, I go out with the kids. Yeah. Good for uh, you. If you came to our front yard, you will notice that I was up in the trees hanging ghouls and goblins, and we have good a dad. pumpkin tree and a. A, a ghost tree, and my son is in particularly very in, into it. So uh, we have the spookiest front yard in all of Ponte Vedra Beach. There you go. You are going to end up being dad of the year for this. You know that. They are desperate to win the award for the best decorated house, and I'm doing my best to help all them. All right. Out. I want the picture when you do it. I will send it yeah. to you when I get home. Thank you, Mike.